what is up? My name is Matthew McCack and this is Teach the Teach on the Dice Tower where I teach you how to teach a board game and in this video I'll be covering Arch Ravels. Now I am assuming you already know how to play this game and now you're looking to teach it to other players. There are plenty of ways to teach games. This is just a way that has worked for me and could possibly help you out if you have any sort of difficulties teaching games or this game in particular. Now I always start off with the three main things. First thing, the story behind the game where you are knitters, I guess, um, and you are trying to be the best knitter out there and gain fans and win points. The object behind the game, which is to get the most victory points, and then the way the game ends, which is when there are just two project cards left out on the board. It'll be a lot easier to explain what I do by seeing what happens on the table, so I will meet you down at the table. So the first thing I like to do when teaching this game is teach them how the actual actions work in terms of you can't take the same action twice, essentially. Now, since this is a pretty welcoming game, um, you might want to go a little in depth with this particular mechanism if people haven't played Scythe or Villainous or things like that. So they, you just have to explain to them like, yep, yeah, you could take this action, uh, but once you do that, you can't take it again the next turn. You have to pick something else on your board. And you can even say that each of us have some sort of special thing for us. Like uh, Derek here is really good at crafting things. Um, you don't necessarily have to, you could wait until a little bit later because they don't really know what that means, but you could possibly say that, yep, we're all good at something or a, a little bit better than others at something. Then once you explain how uh, you actually take actions, you can explain what the actions actually do. The first one I like to start off with is the shopping action. And by the way, I like using this player aid. I think this is a really good player aid and it tells them like, okay, the action phase, you could take any one of these, well, actions that's on your board. Uh, and that this sort of kind of explains it a little bit, but not really. So you're going to have to explain like what does shopping mean? So Derek here, right? He has three shopping. So we take a look at the yarn board and we say like, this is the market. And then you let them know that three means that's how many yarn they can get. So for example, they could get this three yellow, uh, this three yarn card for blue, yellow, and red, and then that would be all. He would be done with his shopping action if he was to have taken that. Or he could have done like uh, the yellow and the red, so two red and one yellow, and just letting them know that they get these little pieces of yarn into their little yarn bowl. And then from there, I let them know about crafting. Like, what do you do with all this yarn? You want to explain that for this yarn, you could do a couple of different things. Either you can create um, one of your, I guess, like standard um, tiles here. Everybody has the same, but they have some sort of different combination of colors, right? So for this scarf here, you need four different colors, and this particular one needs purple, blue, orange, and yellow. So you will explain that to them. If you want to build a scarf, that's what you need um, on your board, right? But everybody has the same hat and blanket. So this is always five of one color. The hat is always two different colors. So that's what crafting does. Derek is allowed to craft four different things. So he has to have enough yarn to actually craft uh, whatever he's gonna be crafting. So you craft this, or you can craft, you have to let them know that they could craft any of these um, things that people are asking for, that the customers are asking for, okay? After that, you let them know that you go into the race phase, right? And again, you point back to this player aid, where essentially, whatever cards they use, they, it gets discarded, and then you're going to reveal the next card. Cool. Now, I don't explain the event cards. Um, so something like this, right? So I wait for the event cards to actually come out. I just let them know that in the top half of the deck, there are certain event cards that might come out and they're usually beneficial, but they can also try to kind of, you know, hurt somebody else a little bit. Um, they're not crazy or anything, but it's just so that they're, uh, that players are aware that these do exist. Uh, but you don't have to go over what each and every one of these event cards are. That's pretty much all you have to say about that. The other thing that I don't uh, really go into is their specialty, uh, like a specialty ask, right, for uh, a certain item. 
So something like this octopus here, right? Now Derek, he wants the prodigy cowl, okay? So if the prodigy cowl comes up, cool. You might say like, okay, so Derek really wants that card because he uh, will gain an additional five victory points if he su successfully completes that card. But if not, for any of these cards, uh, you want to explain to them that they're going to get negative points if they can't complete it. So when you draw it, you might either keep it or give it to somebody else. And you want to explain why you might give it to somebody else because you could lose victory points. But you also have to pay attention to the table. It's like, well, does Derek really want octopus? He doesn't. It's, it, it's not really a big deal for him. Uh, he won't gain an additional five points, but you are giving him a potential eight. Uh, so again, I don't really talk about these until they come out of the deck, until somebody actually draws the card. And by the way, that is part of crafting. You want to explain that that's part of crafting. You could craft one of those as well. Uh, once again, when this card comes out, you could say, all right, that's a card that you can also craft. Uh, and the last thing I go into is this exchange card uh, action, explaining how that works with the yarn and everything like that. Um, and then uh, when you're going through the take restock actions, and this is also, by the way, why I would say if you are teaching the game, I suggest you go first. Or if there's somebody else who has also played the game, maybe they go first, having players who haven't played this game maybe go last or fourth or whatever. Um, just so they could kind of get a sense of how the game works, right? Where you take your action phase, you restock, the market, and then you could take restock actions, which are all explained on the back here, which is really, really good. Uh, I really like this player aid because it's, it, it's very clean. So, and you could just say like, this is when you actually get to finish a project, finishing a project meaning actually, uh, you know, uh, turning in the items that you've created to make this, what is this called? Oktoberfest. Um, so you want to get this and these are the victory points. Uh, that's another thing you want to say that this symbol means victory points um, for anything. Uh, and then also explaining to them, you know, learning a pattern. That's something that's really important. Uh, you can actually learn patterns here. So if you've made a scarf, you can then exchange that scarf, put it back into the pile, turn it over. And now it could just be four different colors but it could just be any colors. It doesn't have to be this purple, blue, orange, or yellow, right? It could be any colors, which is great. And it's still worth four points at the end of the game, as are all of these other uh, things that you make, like the teddy bear and stuff is made, you know. They give you points at the end of the game if you have them in your pile. So you wanna explain that to them as the game is going on. Um, and I would say, I, I would explain that part while you're taking your turn. You don't have to explain it uh, right off the bat. You could just go on into it, go into your action phase and then say, okay, now we're doing our restock phase. And then saying like, okay, now I can take some of these restock actions. And you can let them know, turn over your card. You'll have the finish a project, learn a pattern. You could frog it and it, frog it tells you exactly what it does on the card there. Um, and that's essentially it. So I will meet you back on my face. And that is how I teach Arch Ravels. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave down in the comments below how you like to teach this game and if you have any tips and tricks on how to teach this game or any game in particular. I will catch you next time.